Miss Dickinson, hi. Hi, I'm Boss Heiner. Nice Come to in, meet please. you. We have to locate these technologies in their economic and political context. I think that's a large part of what I try to do mm -hmm. in my own work. And we have to think about the economic pressures on new startup technology firms to claim that they're not necessarily to lie about how far along they are. I'm not suggesting that. Mm -hmm. But most of the portfolios of the biotech firms rest very heavily on patents. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they have to be able to talk up oh, yeah, the I patents. Yeah. This is what's sometimes called promissory capital. Mm -hmm. That is, most of the value in the firm's uh, capital is promissory. And therefore, there are economic pressures as well as the sort of um, psychological desire to believe that these technologies are possible. There's also quite strong reasons for researchers and the funders who back them the trusts or the governments who back them, to um, to indulge in hype, to mm -hmm. say that the technologies are further along than they really are. Now, in some cases, they may well be. But I think we always have to stand back and say, well, what is the actual state of the science? I don't think it's actually ignorant or fearful to do that. I think it's actually being respectful of the science. If the science is strong and robust, it will stand up to that examination. And if it's not mere hype, then we'll find out. People like Julian Safalescu and, and others like him, they have this tendency to believe that if you um, solve your uh, own problems uh, or enhance your children, or uh, that you will cure the problems of society. I do think that the prevailing discourse, uh, and I, I would include Julian's work in this, is very individualistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so while it is utilitarian, it's also libertarian. It's very strongly libertarian, I think. Yes. So that choice is a supreme value. And again, people on the progressive side have also used choice, for example, in the abortion debates. Mm -hmm. So I'm not coming out as being against choice. But I do think that this individualistic slant means that we do often, as you say, lose sight of the social picture, the broader social picture, the broader economic picture, that was why I brought up the issue of the promissory capital in biotechnology firms' uh, portfolios, because I do think that it's important that we look at the economic reality behind the development of these new technologies. After all, they're either funded by the state or by private capital, so it's reasonable that in either case we look at what those interests are. Mm -hmm. I, I never use the argument that it's unnatural because I think that's also a bad argument. Preventing one in five babies from dying before the age of one is unnatural, but it's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with that, and I don't see how anyone could. So I don't think the argument that it's unnatural is a very valid argument. Uh, what I try to use instead is the argument that it might not be beneficial for particular classes or particular genders or society as a whole. So I like to expand the discussion beyond individual choice and beyond is it natural or not, which I think is a, a dead end. Mm 